obviously I didn't support it, right? It's like asking me, how do I feel about us being the governor of a state where we had terrible forest fires? You know, you take this job, you know, good and bad, and our voters very clearly said that they thought this was, this was a step forward. And there you have it. Colorado Governor John Hickenlooper not feeling so chill about his state's voter-approved decriminalization of marijuana. Coloradoans, you may recall, voted last month to amend their state constitution to legalize recreational use of limited amounts of marijuana by a 10-point margin. Wasn't that close. And this week, Governor Hickenlooper sort of reluctantly signed the paperwork that actually gets that pro-pot amendment into the constitution, the state constitution. He also signed an executive order setting up a task force to, implement, to figure out how to implement the new law, how, for example, a state will regulate the newly legal pot market. The recreational pot smokers of the great state of Colorado, seen here enjoying their drug of choice on the steps of the state capitol building, are, of course, not waiting around for the details to be ironed out. But the details are really pretty important. Apart from the state of Colorado figure out how to regulate its residents' newly constitutional right to, you know, smoke a bowl, there is the not-so-small matter of federal law. Marijuana use may well be enshrined in the Colorado State Constitution as of this week. It is still not legal in the eyes of the federal government. And that matters. Colorado and Washington State, where voters also decriminalized marijuana this year, they're about to find themselves in the middle of a major clash between state and federal law. And until it is resolved, we've got something of a legal pickle. Colorado governor for Colorado's governor, for example, has reached out to the Justice Department for guidance as he figures out how to implement the law in his state, but he does not seem to have gotten very far in his talks with the feds. I mean, this is a complex piece of jurisdiction. Uh, this is the kind of thing that often, you know, that could end up in the Supreme Court. Uh, we recognize that they are working as hard as they can to find you know, what, what the, the right legal decision is. Well, the Justice Department has not been specific about how it will deal with federal lawbreakers in states that have legalized pot. They did release this ominous sounding statement on the day pot became legal in Colorado. Quote, the Department of Justice is reviewing the legalization initiatives recently passed in Colorado and Washington state. The department's responsibility to enforce the Controlled Substances Act remains unchanged. In enacting the Controlled Substances Act, Congress determined that marijuana is a Schedule I controlled substance, regardless of any changes in state law, including the change in Colorado. Growing, selling, or possessing any amount of marijuana remains illegal under federal law. Sounds like the Justice Department is about to have a fight on its hands, whether it wants it or not. But in all the discussion of how to head off this impending crisis of what can be done to try to reconcile these opposing state and federal laws, a pretty simple fix has been largely overlooked. This fix comes from the very same law the Justice Department is citing this week to emphasize that pot is still a dangerous, illicit drug in the eyes of the federal government, the Controlled Substances Act. The Controlled Substances Act was signed into law in 1970 by one Richard Nixon. It created a system of sorting drugs into categories, the most dangerous being the ones that have a high potential for abuse and no, quote, currently accepted medical use. These are the big time illegal drugs. Just like the nice man from the Justice Department said, marijuana is indeed a Schedule I drug, along with stuff like LSD, peyote, heroin, and ecstasy. The schedules go all the way up to Schedule 5, which includes stuff that's not seen as very likely to be abused and is pretty easy to get. Cough medicine, for instance. But Schedule 2, one step down from the stuff the government says is turbo dangerous, these drugs, they're, they're not completely criminalized. These are things that, by and large, you can get a prescription for. Stuff like methadone, Oxycontin, morphine, opium, and Ritalin. Oh, and also cocaine and PCP. Yep, marijuana is on the super dangerous, terrible, horrible, no good, very bad drug list along with LSD and heroin, while cocaine and PCP are on the less dangerous list with all the prescription painkillers and kids' ADD drugs. But these drug schedule classifications, it turns out, they are not carved in stone. They can be changed. In fact, they can be changed even without an act of Congress. As my colleague Dylan Matthews outlined at the Washington Post today, if there is a citizen's petition asking for it, the Drug Enforcement Administration can work to get a drug, say marijuana, rescheduled. Quote, in effect, that means that the Attorney General can direct the DEA to act on a petition for marijuana rescheduling. So Eric Holder could direct the agency to remove marijuana from the list of scheduled drugs, decriminalizing it for medical use federally. 
In fact, as luck would have it, one of these petitions, hey, it's already working its way through the legal system right now. So there is a simple way to resolve what could otherwise be a really messy federal state battle over pot smoking in Colorado and Washington. The feds could just give a little, chill out on this whole pot thing. I didn't think I'd see this day and then it happened. <laughs> Thanks <laughs> for